Hey everyone, how are you? I'm Enrique Abeda. Welcome to uh, the HX Research Podcast. Uh, today we're gonna do something a little bit interesting. Uh, we're actually gonna share an idea that we recently gave to our paid subscribers. Uh, it was an idea in HX Income. Uh, which is our options-oriented income strategy. Now, many of you who are familiar with us know that we have two trading products. One is called HX Trader and one is called HX Income. They're based on the same methodology. So what we do is we identify uh, stocks or opportunities where we could either buy the stock or sell put options, and then we make the recommendation. Uh, for HX Income in particular, we're, we're probably we're choosing a little bit of a different type of stock than we do for HX Trader. Uh, we're looking for just really, really high certainty income opportunities. But my point is going to be is that when we do anything in HX Income, most likely they would uh, also work in HX Trader. So what we're going to do today, last week we put out uh, our first new H HX Income uh, idea. Uh, it's doing quite well, actually, <laughs> since, since then. Uh, this would also apply to HX Trader. And what I'm going to do today, we have my friend Randy joining us. Uh, Randy is a longtime reader, longtime friend, uh, very successful executive in the music industry. And Randy is sort of the perfect customer for what we're doing here at HX Research. You know, super smart guy, super successful, interested in stocks, interested in options, uh, but does not have a professional background, knows a lot, uh, and, and can understand what we're doing. And, and But what we're going to do today is I'm literally going to walk through the process of how we came up with this idea with Randy. We're doing this real time. So you're going to see, you know, kind of like it's a very free form conversation, uh, you know, what we're doing here and uh, and, and going to walk through the process. And Randy's going to ask me questions just like you would if you were were on this uh, on this video with us. Uh, and in fact, we might open this up to more readers through time to, to go ahead and do this. First off, I want to say, uh, hey, Randy, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, how's uh, how's Miami? I guess you're getting ready for a cruise, right? Yeah, taking <laughs> one of my clients out on one of these rock cruises, but doing well and excited when I texted you yesterday saying I was a little bit confused about this Adobe option situation that you're like, hey, let's just get on a Zoom and I'll teach you and everyone else at the same time. And, you know, thankfully I did okay. I got in and out quick and did okay, but kind of got a little scared also and had questions to make sure to I could alleviate my fears for the next time and hoping this conversation can well, do that. And, and and that that's the part that got me going when you said that um cuz this that this adobe trade was and is a great trade and i think you made a very nice uh what what when wall street we would call scalp uh, on the uh, on the trade, but I think you could you could have made a lot more and could make a lot more. So you know this is one thing too. I, I think if if any of you all uh, you know who are readers, both uh, free or paid, uh, we have our email addresses available: info at hxresearch.net. Also on all of our dailies, there's a comment section. Just hit us up if you have a question. You know, again, we can't give personalized uh, investment advice, but when we're talking about ideas that we have out there, we can we can answer questions. So so real quick. Before before we jump into this, Randy, you and I have known each other from the music business. What is your stock background? I, I have no idea. Like, you know, you've always been very interested and, and you were a subscriber for both Whitney and I. But tell me your, you know, your, your background with stocks, options, what you do, kind of how you think about it, all of that. Yeah. So in the, in the dot-com boom, I first started dabbling in like the early days of E-Trade and probably invested $10,000 and ended up with like $2,000 in the dot-com bust. But I also held on to. You, you might end up with forty thousand first, and then two thousand at the end is kind of how it usually went. So. It, it, exactly, that, that is quite the story there. But um, it didn't scare me off. It just taught me that I need to learn more. And a couple of years later, found an investment advisor helped me out, and I've just been trying to block, buy smart stocks, not following the meme nonsense trends, which you know. Don't get me wrong, I made some money on a couple of them because there were opportunities, but stayed away from that. And over the years, I've just read folks like yourself, Whitney, and other newsletters and a lot of listening to CNBC, and have slowly pulled a lot away from my investment advisor and traded myself and, you know, have had a couple of stocks that I've seen 10x returns on. And as I get more comfortable, I start investing a bit more money. You know, I started doing, you know, a thousand or two thousand dollars. And, you know, my biggest swing I ever made was buying 525 shares of Facebook 
at the IPO, okay. which I never let go of. Okay, great. So it gives you kind of a nice. breath of nice. where I've been. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. No, and that's that's good. I mean, you bring up something too, which is, you know, look. When I started in this business, there was barely any, any internet. Uh, really, in the last 10, 20 years, I think the availability of people like myself and counsel and education for investors has gone up a thousand fold. So, you know, you're a perfect example of a guy. I'm sure your financial advisor is a great financial advisor. But if people have an interest and, and have the time and are willing to do the work, I think you can do better or certainly not pay the fees, um, you know, if you're willing to show the discipline and, and all that. So I, I think you're a, a perfect example So of, of the kind of, kind of people we have as our readers. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk, uh, the idea today is Adobe software, Adobe Inc. Um, you all are probably familiar with the company. You've used Adobe Acrobat, Print Shop, uh, uh, Photoshop. Sorry, <laughs> see, I'm not an Adobe user. Uh, I was sitting there struggling with that. Uh, the whole suite of the products. Um, you know, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to start very little conversation about the company, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the stock and what got us interested. A couple weeks back, or maybe it was last week, uh, the, the new chat GPT video uh, engine came out, Sora. And there were all these crazy videos. I don't know if you saw the videos. Um, they were really freaky, but really incredible. And, you know, I was watching it. Everyone's all excited about it and stuff like that. And then I'm watching CNBC as I, I always have it on. And, and a lot of people are, are bullshit about CNBC. I love CNBC. It actually makes me ton of, tons of money. CNBC made me money here mm -hmm. because they were talking about Sora. And they said uh, Adora, they, they said that uh, Adobe software had sold off as a result of Sora. So I was like, okay. So I was like, Adobe's selling off on Sora. Part of me first is like, well, Sora looks great, but I, I read about it really quickly, and it's like they just at least a, uh, released a beta. No one can use it. You know, it's kind of wonky. Like, is this really a big deal for Adobe? But, but, but before I did anything more, before I tried to make a fundamental decision, I said, okay, let me go and uh, let me take a look at the Adobe stock price and see what Adobe has been doing. This is the Adobe stock price. So uh, this is the day that Sora was announced. Uh, you know, the stock was at 590. It was down a little bit from 635. The market's been consolidating a little bit. bit. And look at this. It gets absolutely smashed, okay? The stock goes from uh, an, uh, a high here of 607 to that day, it's down to 550. Okay, so it's down almost 10%. This is Adobe, right? and and this is a great, great company. And I want to – so first off, I, I have a lot of history with Adobe, but let's put that aside. So this is the setup. I said, okay, here's a piece of news, Sora. Then here's a other news item. Adobe stock has sold off. The next thing I looked is I said, let's look at the chart. And this, to me, was a material sell-off. When you see uh, a gap down like this, a 10% move, you know, the other thing, let's let's have some fun with numbers. I'm pulling up. This is all on Bloomberg. This is a market cap with a quarter of a billion dollar market cap. So Sora is announced, and this stock sells off $25 billion, okay? Okay. This is material. This is worth we're looking at. And so what I'm going to do here, Randy, I'm going to start walking through my, my methodology, and then I'm going to pause and see if you have any questions. But so let's go through. We have news items. Sora, ChatGPT, uh, uh, Adobe sell-off. We then say, okay, is that sell-off material $25 billion, uh, which would probably make it like the 370th biggest company in the S&P 500, meaning just the sell-off would make it one of the biggest companies in the S&P 500. That's material to me. And so then I went and looked at the chart. And again, you can see the chart, the sell-off here. The first thing I'm looking for, though, when, with our trading methodology is we are looking for winners, okay? What do I mean by winners? Well, by winners, I mean that st stocks that go up. There's only one definition of winning in, in, in the stock game. That's making money on your stocks. We primarily or almost exclusively do longs. That means I want to find companies, stocks that are up and preferably up a lot. And the way I kind of describe it is I look for charts that are up and to the right, okay? So look at this chart here with Adobe. Okay. Wow. Okay. The stock has gone a year ago. 
was at 323 and basically had doubled by the time we got to uh, before pr- prior to the Sora news. That shows me that whatever is happening with Adobe, so I don't know anything about earnings now, I don't know anything about earnings revisions, whatever is happening with Adobe, uh, shareholders like it. There is, there is incremental positive excitement and demand because you don't have a stock go from uh, 325 to 650 because people hate it or they're not interested. And, and what I say about incremental excitement and demand, remember, there's always the same amount of supply and demand. There's always the same amount of buyers and sellers. The difference is, is the excitement of the buyers and the excitement of the sellers. Obviously, there's something going on. And and the other thing, so the first thing we're doing is we're looking for a good short-term chart. Let's go real quick, though. And what I also like to do is look for a good long-term chart, because if a stock's just been going up for a year, maybe we don't, we do or not have a really positive cycle here. Here's the chart going back to 2010. Now, I, I, if you can see this here, like this stock was $30 10 years ago and hit this recent high of 600. The stock is up 2,000 fold. Holy cow, that's an awesome, awesome stock. This has been one of the best companies out there. Um, you know, you can see here there's this flurry, which we'll talk about a little bit later, which is sort of this post-COVID hangover. But this is a winning stock, both in the short term and the intermediate term. So first off, do you have any questions about that, uh, Randy? Do you understand the concept of a winning stock? Uh, honestly, it's as simple as look for a short-term and long-term chart that's up and to the right. Does that make sense to you? Oh, it makes perfect sense. And, you know, you look at where the drops are and see they're similar to other companies in the COVID drop and spike. And, you know, that gives me comfort that that drop wasn't necessarily material. It was just the moment in time. Yeah. And, and look, it'll depend. We'll pull up some charts of companies that went right through COVID and it was fine. But what I'm looking for, you know, there, there, there's something here and we're going to go to the fundamentals in a second. But, you know, if a company is kicking ass and the stock price doesn't care. You could look at that two ways. You could say, well, that's an opportunity, or you could look at it and say, well, if the stock price doesn't care, investors don't care, why am I gonna care? I lean more towards the second one. The reason is, is if the company has been kicking ass for a long time and the stock hasn't, well, then there's something going on that's well like entrenched. And so now I have to make an assumption about like what's going to change to change that equation. When I take a stock like this, that's up like this, this massively, let's look, look at the five-year chart. The five-year chart's going to be a little, little uh, more bumpy. But when I look at a company like this, I'm like, okay, people are buying what they're selling as far as a stock goes, okay? So the first thing we want to do when we're looking for, for opportunities at, in HX Trader HX in, Income is look for winner stocks, okay? This is the definition of one. So now, why do stocks go up? Okay, stocks can go up for a lot of reasons. But I'm going to tell you the number one reason stocks go up, it's because they grow. They grow revenue, and ultimately, they grow earnings of free cash flow. So my, my very simple rule is this. If a company is earning a dollar a share of earnings per share, and we can go through some of these terms, Randy, as you need it, but as you need to, but a, a dollar per share is just the, the rate of earnings, you know, it's, it's an EPS, we can we'll go through that a little bit. But if a company goes from earning a dollar a share to earning $10 a share, the stock's going to go up. Now, there's a quirky thing here. It's not like you as a shareholder are going to get that $10, like if we look here, uh, there is no dividend at uh, Adobe. I don't know off the top of my head whether there's a buyback or not. We could maybe pull that up. But what is happening is investors have decided that earnings growth is a proxy for the value of the company, whether they're getting the value or, the, or not, You know, even if they're not getting dividends or buybacks or any of the cash back. So finding a copy, company that goes from a dollar to $10 of earnings is a good thing. So let's look here. We're now going through the earnings of, uh, of, uh, of Adobe. So this table here, this is uh, EM on Bloomberg, shows the earnings per share. Let's go all the way back, and this was in our report. We did a nice chart of this, but let's look here. 2013, they make $1.33. 2014, they make $1.36. Now, this was back when my old hedge fund was involved in the stock. They were making a change from one-time sales to subscriptions. Uh, Adobe was really the first SaaS software as a service or subscription company out there. But look what happens then. $1.36. 
215, 311, 452, 682, 807, 1039, 1256, 1386, 1626. Wow. In 10 years, the company has grown earnings eightfold. And these are actual real numbers. So, you know, when you look at a stock that looks like this, I'm going to tell you when you when you find stocks that are and I'm again I'm pulling up the the 10 year chart here. When you find stocks that are up and to the right like this, almost always, I'm going to say 95% of the time, they're going to have earnings growth like this. So what I want to do next is I want to identify a company that's got, you know, this this incredible earnings growth and 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 long sustained earnings growth. One other thing to look at this earnings growth and this is pretty incredible. Look to the right here, okay? You can see in the beginning there were some issues, but look at the consistency per quarter. I'm looking at earnings per share the company in the last 10 years has actually never reported a down quarter. Now, that makes sense because it's software as a subscription business, but this is this is great raw material for what we're going to start. So remember, we're looking for a dislocation in a winning company. We start by looking at the stock price. Then we look to see if there's some fundamentals behind it, the earnings in this case. Um, does this make sense to you, Yeah, uh, Randy? 100%. I spend a lot of time watching okay. CNBC and reading you, so um, – I'm up to speed. Okay, okay. Well, good. And, and you know, I'm going to do something here. This will sound kind of strange. We don't need to get into what do the earnings really mean and are do you really see the earnings as a shareholder? I, that's all academic. I'm telling you this, and just I, if there's one thing you take from this video, take this. A company that grows earnings per share from a dollar to $10 is going up. And it's going up a lot. It may go up in the near term. It may go up in the intermediate term. It may go up as much as the, the earnings. It may go up less than the earnings. It's fucking going up. Okay. That's just, that's a rule of physics. We could get into the intellectual behind that, but screw that. I'm telling you what works. Okay. So the next thing we want to do. So, so step one, find an opportunity in a winning stock. That's step two, find one that's growing earnings. Step three, and, and hopefully with consistency, let's go to step four. We want to look at companies that are beating expectations, okay? So the, the way this works is this this uh, this stock, and I'm pulling up right now here, something called a on Bloomberg. Adobe's a big company, quarter of a billion dollar company. Off the top of my head, it's probably top 50 in the S&P 500. This company has 42 analysts that cover this stock on the sell side. That's uh, sell side means that work for brokerages like, you know, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, etc. There are a lot of people talking about this stock. So what happens is each of these analysts has an estimate out there. Okay, this page that I just brought up is called Earn. This is uh, the earnings announcements for Adobe. So let's go back to the most recent earnings announcement. Uh, the announced date was on uh, December 13th, okay? Uh, this was the 12-23, uh, or this is Q4-23 uh, period end. So they may have an off fiscal year. Uh, they were, uh, the comparison here, uh, the estimate was 4139, and they reported 4.27. So they beat the number by 3.17%. So let's just take a step back. Earnings are what counts the most for companies. There are a bunch of analysts that have estimates of earnings out there. Everyone thought they were going to report $4.14. The company, once a quarter, reports those earnings. And they can report what people expect, $4.14. They could report less, $3.50. Or they could report more, $4.27. Okay? And these are the earnings estimates. So the, the the sports analogy I gave here, and this is kind of a weird one, okay, is imagine you're a supporter of a of a, what's actually what's your favorite uh, sport, uh, Randy? I don't know. Are you a sports fan? I don't even know. I'm going to throw like, you off and say surfing. So maybe we should go with baseball since I've been to games. Yeah, with we'll you. go with baseball. Surfing's <laughs> surfing's not going to help me. Okay. So you know, look, you, you've got a team. You've got, I'm a Yankees fan. Okay. So we have expectations about the Yankees, right? The Yankees are going to have a winning record. The Yankees are going to make the playoffs, etc. Um, but what happens is, and, and that's with Adobe, we have expectations about the company. The company is going to grow earnings. It's always grown earnings. They're going to grow up by this much. Here you can actually see, and we're getting really deep into this chart, 414 was the estimate. That's versus 335 uh, the, uh, the, the, the previous quarter, I believe. Um, so let me get that right. Actually, 414 was the estimate, and that was versus, uh, again, folks, this is real time here. 
Uh, these numbers don't quite match up, but 427 versus 360. So 19% growth. Okay, don't worry about the numbers matching up. There's just a little discrepancy to this. They were expected to grow 20%. But what this shows you is they grew even more than that. Okay, this 427 was versus they were expected to do 414. So imagine if the Yankees, instead of finishing, you know, I don't know, baseball fans, there are 90 and, and 72, finish 172. You are a fan of a winning team. You expect the team to win. But if they go out tomorrow and in the game they're playing win 22 to 2, you're more excited, right? It's not that you had low expectations, but holy cow, they crushed it. So this drives, and this is very important, it drives dopamine in our brain, right? If we have an expectation of something and that something is better than what we expected or the result is better than we, we get a positive dopamine hit. So people get excited. So look what's happened with, with Adobe here. Adobe has beat every single quarter except one in the last 10 years. There was one quarter back in 2018, and who knows what was going on then. So what happens is to see a winning stock, you've got companies – you, you, you're going you're gonna to see companies that are growing earnings but are also exceeding expectations. So does this – and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a second, uh, Randy, why this matters. But does this make sense, the whole exceeding expectations and why investors would get more excited and all that? Yeah, absolutely. And investors want to jump in to follow the crowd just as it is in my industry. <laughs> when someone wants to sign a band, everyone wants to sign a band. You know what? The, the music industry is, a, is another great example is when, when, when a band's doing bigger and better – than what people expect. People thought they would be playing, you know, uh, Bowery Ballroom and they're playing Madison Square Garden. All of a sudden, other people go, wait, shit, that band's playing Madison. I got to check this out. I'm not familiar with that band, but they just played, you know, Madison Square Garden. I'm going to check it out. There's another aspect here, though, that's interesting. And this one's more subtle because a lot of people would look at this and be like, well, you know, you're not really talking about the company. You're not talking about management, you know, all that. out." Well, I really am because... I just showed you two pieces of data that are very important. For a decade, this company has grown earnings and this company has beat numbers. That's not an accident, okay? So one of the things that always pisses me off or annoyed me is like you, you talk here investors on CNBC. They go, what's, your, what's the most important thing in buying a company? They go, good management, okay? And I'm like, okay. So you're some guy sitting in New York watching a, a video screen. You've never run a fucking trucking company. You've never been in a, a semi truck. How do you know what good management is? You wouldn't know. You, you couldn't manage your way out of a McDonald's probably. But we can look at the data. And what I'll tell you is this, is when I see a company that for a decade has growing earnings and for a decade is beating numbers – that's good management, okay? Now, we could say, well, maybe their industry is that great. Well, that's fine because if the management stunk, even if the industry is great, they're going to they're going to slip up. We definitely have good management here. So, does that concept too the the concept that the data, especially earnings and performance against earnings or revenue or whatever the metric is, actually tells us something about the competency of the management? Does that does that make good sense to you, Randy? Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. And, you know, on the flip side of it, you could have great management who comes into a company who doesn't understand the industry and does damage, where you'll see a stock pop and then pull back because people believe in the new management, but they don't know the business. And you can see it in the earnings also. Like you'll see companies that were, were beating earnings, performing well, and then all of a sudden they're, they're doing very poorly. Now, remember though too, you know, I, I, I joke, I always make the, the, the comment that, you know, it doesn't really matter who, pre who the president is for the, the economy. That's to a certain extent true for companies as well. You know, if you, the, the old Wall Street stories, they talk about buggy whip companies, right? You were making buggy whips when the car came. Didn't matter whether you're the best manager in the history of mankind. You know, likewise, is like if you owned oil when oil first came around. But, but for the most part, you, you definitely can see management competency in the consistency. So we're going to go to one final part, and this is really in the weeds. But I'm going to tell you, this is the single most important thing to understand with a stock, if you can get down to this level. I mean, but but this is also why you should subscribe to HX Research because we have this data. This is hard to get. What, what, what this is, this is a graph. The blue graph here are the analyst earnings estimates for, and this is set on Q1. I'm going to set it on annual. These are the annual estimates for uh, earnings, okay? And what you're going to see is that 
long-term stock price performance is very correlated, follows the path of long-term earnings growth. This company went from earning $1.30 a share to $16 per share, and the stock went from $30 to $600. In the short term, because people already have expectations of growth, exceeding expectations and having those expectations then go up graphs one for one with the stock. So holy cow, look at this chart. Remember we talked about uh, Adobe had a, a post-COVID hangover, and we could talk about what that is. I Honestly, I, I don't even care to a certain extent. We, we do, and it's part of the HX process that we understand what was going on because we want to make sure there wasn't a real big problem. But these are the earnings estimates. So look at this. Back in late 2021, the analysts thought Adobe was going to earn uh, right here, let me pull up the number. They thought they were going to earn 1950 per share. But as we went through 22, the estimate fell from 1950 to 1740. Okay, it fell by two dollars. Now, what I'm going to say is something interesting. So, you would look at that earnings estimate 1950 to 1740 is about 10 percent. Look what happened to the stock. That's the white line here. The stock went from 680 down to 275. The stock got cut in half. Holy cow. So a 10% drop in earnings estimates, because I'm going to show you one other thing here too. This is this part that blows my mind. This is, um, earnings were still going to grow. Like they still had, had plenty. Remember, look at all this earnings growth. But a 10% drop in earnings estimates cut the stock in half. So then what happened though is the earnings estimates, again, let's go back to the annual here. Uh, the earnings estimates, they, they, they bottomed in December of, of 2022. Now, what's interesting is the stock actually bottoms about three months before. The, the stock market, you know, we talk about this being a discounting mechanism. The, the stock market's this giant, uh, like, uh, multivariate equation of all this information going in. And it is scary how predictive it is. Like, it's, it's, it's like an organism. It's like the ocean, you know. But here, the stock uh, uh, bottoms about three months before, and then earnings start going up, okay? So we go up to 17, and look what the stock does. On earnings going, so this is even crazier. Earnings go from 1740 to 1794. That's about a 4% gain, and the stock doubles, OK, so again, and now we could go through, oh, what about interest rates? What about, you know, all these other and those are all factors. But I'm going to tell you, earnings revisions drive the short term into stock. And I want to do one thing here. You mentioned Meta before. Let's do the EEG on Meta, um, because this is one of my favorite charts, because people were like, oh, you know, Meta went down because of the metaverse and Zuckerberg's <laughs> a, a terrible person and all this bullshit. This is the EEG on Meta and and the 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 earnings. Look here. Back in late 21, they're expected to earn five bucks. That number got cut by two thirds <laughs> to two dollars, okay, because of his investing and other stuff. And look, that number's now gone to 428. And look at the stock. The stock's gone from 91 to 500. So um, let me go back to the, the structure here. We're looking for an opportunity in a winning stock. We look for winning stocks that growing earnings are beating expectations and have rising uh, earnings uh, uh, earnings estimates. Does this make sense, Randy? You have any questions so far with sort of the, the five things we're looking for? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm enjoying the refresher and enjoying watching this ride on Meta since I wrote it well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Since you're there. So, okay. So let's go back to one last thing now. So this process that we just did here at HX, um, you know, uh, this would be hard for you to do at home, to be honest. At first, I have a Bloomberg. It costs 2,500 bucks. You kind of got to know what you're looking for. Um, but I guess if you had a Bloomberg, you, you could go through and do it. Um, but then let's talk about something else. There is a fundamental overlay here. So I happen to have been following Adobe since it went public 30 years ago. Back in 2014, Adobe, 2013, Adobe was one of the first companies 
that went from one-time software sales. You used to go and buy Photoshop and spend three hundred dollars on it, and you know then you you wouldn't buy it again for another two or three years. You remember this Microsoft? I remember when Microsoft Windows would have the big Windows drop, Windows ninety eight. <laughs> Everyone was waiting in line to like buy it. Is it oh, young people are gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about? But but that was a model. It was a very profitable model, right? Because to sell an incremental copy of of, of Photoshop didn't cost them anything. It cost them twenty cents to to print the floppy disk or whatever it is. But then no one would buy it for three, four years. But what they did is as the internet grew and we begin to get high bandwidth and broadband speeds, et cetera, they turned to software as a service where they said, we're not going to charge you $300 for Adobe Photoshop. We're going to charge you $20 a month. Okay. So in the beginning you go, well, gosh, I'm not paying, spending 300, I'm spending 20 and I'm getting Photoshop. Now though, what happens is if you hold on to Photoshop longer than, you know, 30 divided by 20, 15 months, you're paying them more money and there's escalators and, and all this other stuff. But, but actually both people win. But what happened, and, and this is just a little bit of the story. Let's go back to the chart here. Um, when a company first goes from one time, uh, uh, sales to, uh, to whatchamacallit, oh, see, it, ha- it, it recovered really quick there, um, goes to, uh, to software as a service. Look what happened to the stock, right? This is when we bought the stock at my old firm. You know, the stock went from 34 to 24 because they were making on a sale $300 and now they were making 20. But I know this company and I know the product and it's just, it's an incredible product. And what I knew was that they have a subscription model to the overwhelming majority of the revenue subscription. So I knew that we had a company that was in a good competitive position that was, uh, had a good business model that that's got the subscription side. And I fundamentally understood that we weren't at risk there, but let's go through because sometimes, you know, look, it's going to be hard to find a winning stock. That's really secularly challenged, meaning they've got big problems because the stock won't look like this. It's going to look like this. Okay. Um, but here then what I did is I, I basically went through and I thought about Sora. Okay. And here's the thing. I've been doing this for 30 years. I have seen, I remember, this is going to sound like a crazy, crazy example. When Yahoo came public, okay, and people don't think a lot about Yahoo, but Yahoo was the first big internet stock that was AOL kind of, but AOL was like Netflix. It had dial up and then it turned into an internet stock. Yahoo was the first big internet stock. All of the newspaper stocks got crushed right when Yahoo went public. And everyone was like, oh, well, people are just going to get their news for free on the internet. They're just going to get it from Yahoo. No one's going to buy, buy a newspaper. Those newspaper stocks from that bottom in 97, 98, which we bought the bejesus out of, went up tenfold because people were right about the outcome, but they were very wrong about the time. That's kind of how I feel about Sora. I I, I don't know that they're actually right about AI, getting rid of all video editing and things like that, but I got to tell you something. It ain't happening next week. It ain't happening next month. And I got to tell you, it's most likely not happening next year. And I've seen this before. So my judgment was this. And let's make a very, very important judgment here. Here's a winning stock on a winning company that has a history of crushing earnings. Okay. The last earnings report was 12, 20, 12, 13. The next one's on March 14th. Um, let's actually ask ourselves. Do we think anything's going to happen in the next couple weeks that's going to – that Sora is going to cause this company to miss numbers? Absolutely not, and they're going to crush numbers because Sora's not going to have any impact, and they've been crushing numbers. So we said, okay, fundamentally, this looks like a good setup, okay? Does this make sense to you, Randy? This is the fundamental overlay on this. Yeah, absolutely, 100 percent. And you know, the one thing I'll add is with the whole Sora thing is – they have great management at Adobe. Who's to say that they're not going to become the leader in editing video that's created by Sora? This was the exact conversation that we were just having before you got on <laughs> with my video guy. I swear to God, I swear to God, my video, I, Randy, you do a lot of video. My video guy, Matt, is on here, uh, you know, longtime friend, member of HX, you know, and he was basically saying, he goes, you know what, I, I, uh, Adobe's just going to have their own Sora kind of thing. And, and so, so, but again, you know, the point is, like, uh, the, let me say something else. The stock, the market overall is a little tired. It's uh, quite overbought. The stock had had a good run. You know, the sell-off on Sora, I, I often talk about stocks as they have potential, and then they eventually have a quote-unquote catalyst, 
But the catalyst has very little to do with what happens. It has more to do with the potential. You know, the just Adobe was ready for a sell-off. It was ready for a break. It just happened to be on Sora. But but a, a objective person would look at Sora and say, eh, it ain't going to do very much. So let's go now to our final se- piece of secrets, uh, the, the secret sauce here. Okay, the final piece, the final ingredient. Okay, I'm mixing my metaphors. <laughs> I do that. Don't edit that out, Matt. I, <laughs> I like my mixed metaphors. So as people who are familiar with our strategy know, we use something called relative strength index, okay? Relative strength index, you know, I actually had a friend, we were going through this the other day, she goes, oh, can I see the definition? I'll understand it better. I showed her the definition, the actual mathematical formula. I was like, I don't know, it doesn't help me understand it better. <laughs> um, what you need to understand about this is a stock is a, is, a, is a body in motion, okay? It can be going up, it can be going down. What happens is, as it goes in motion, it can accelerate, or it can, you know, the, the motion can accelerate up or down, or it can be relatively low. So let's take a look here. I'm, I'm going to do this. Look at this chart. Here's this stock uh, in October. Look at the movement that it did between October, uh, November 1st, and the end of November. It moved a lot. By the way, when I look back here in in July to November, it really didn't do jack shit. Like it, it kind of, uh, it, it just kind of kind of moseyed along. But here it got, it moved a lot very quickly. RSI is a measurement of the velocity of a stock. So think of it this way, just like a car, right? A car is just, let's say it's just moving forward no matter what. It can be moving forward fast or it can be moving forward slow. RSI is that velocity. And what we look for is you know, high velocity stocks that have moved, moved up a lot really quick, you know, really, really fast. Let's pull up everyone's. So we're going to do a video on this later this week. Uh, let's pull up NVIDIA. Woo! Yeah. That's one that went up really fast. Okay, look at this RSI. We're, gonna, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. We're going to do it later this week. We're, we're talking about RSI, high RSIs right now. But stocks that go up a lot really quick and get over an RSI of 70, they're not shorts. And in fact, when they first go over that RSI, they're probably better longs, but let's put that aside because that's a that's a medium probability bet. What's a high probability bet is that stocks that go below an RSI of 30, this is when they go down fast, they begin to get very interesting, okay? And there's a funny thing about this is that the low RSI is five times the signal as a high RSI. You give me a terrible company that's got bad results and they do a super low RSI, there's a chance it's going to bounce. You know, and again, it's human emotion. It's just like, you know, when you're, let's go back to the sports team. Your, your team's lost 12 games in a row. You know, you just turn the TV off. You know, maybe you were watching every single game, but you're like, screw this. I can't watch this. I can't watch this anymore. That's what people are doing with the shares, right? They're just saying, I can't deal with this anymore. But then... What happens is the team wasn't that bad. They win a couple games. And what do you do? You go, oh, okay, they won a couple. I'm going to watch it again, okay? That's sort of what happens with the stock. Now, that didn't necessarily happen here with Adobe because we're just talking about a couple days, which is one of our favorite setups. But you can see here with Adobe, um, we went below this RSI of 30, okay? Look, we went right down here, RSI of 28.9584, okay? But then what we want to do is we want to see the RSI go back above 30. Because here's the thing. I don't know exactly why. I, I kind of think I know why people are selling the stock, but I don't know how many are selling. I don't know how much stock they have. I, I don't know how upset they are. But by looking at the RSI, I can begin to tell when they've kind of exhausted, the, the emotional people have exhausted themselves by looking at an RSI going back through 30. Okay, so this is the point where you want to buy this stock. Okay, so let's look here. Um, I'm going to pull this table up. Yeah, well, uh, and then we're going to take this over to. Is RSI something that the regular investor can find on any tools online? It's hard, is the answer. So yeah. you know, like, look, I, the, the example here, and this is why you should subscribe to Ajax, <laughs> is you know, I, I've tried cooking. I've cooked Indian food a couple times. Okay, and uh, I've done a pretty good job of it. OK, but I'm not a professional chef. I certainly have no experience doing Indian food. I got to go out and get the ingredients. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's there's different ways of preparing it that I'm not accustomed to, even though I've done it, you know, probably a dozen times. Um, you know, it's a lot easier for me to go out and get the Indian food at the Indian restaurant without me going out and making it myself. 
and, and that's kind of what this process is like, you know, is there's these elements, whether it's the earnings revisions, the RSI, et cetera, some of it's out there. The earnings revisions are very hard to get. Um, you can get it if you want to spend 2500 bucks on Bloomberg. We're a lot cheaper. Um, the RSI is out there, but it, but, it, but it is difficult. But I want to tell you one thing. I, I came up with this the other day, Randy. Uh, we were t- I was thinking about what HX is. And to me, you know, there's the whole old the saying with Jesus, right, is you uh, give a man a fish he eats for a day, teach him to fish he eats for the rest of his life. What we're trying to do with HX is I want to teach you how to fish while you're at an awesome fish restaurant that's very affordable with great food. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to continue to come to my restaurant. You may do some fishing on the side, but my restaurant's so good and makes you so much money in this case and is actually enjoyable, the, the food and, and the results, that you're just going to keep on coming to the restaurant while you still take up fishing. And and so it, it can be done, but it's it's not easy. So so here, if you go to this table, you see here we went to 28.7 and then on fr- and then it, it thrusts back through, okay? And, and let's just do something here. You could have bought this stock. If you bought it at the close on after that going through 30 you buy it at 553 okay um so this is the signal now those who are listening or paying attention to the market will say oh yeah nvidia did blowout numbers uh you know the nasdaq flu we had one of the biggest days in the stock market i don't care something was going to happen that was going to put this stock back below above a, th- a 30 RSI. I'm just telling this is how it works. Like you people look at CNBC wants to tell you the ca- the news is the catalyst. It's the potential of the stock. So here what would have happened is we would recommend this stock as it goes through 30 and 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 buy it. And I'm going to say something. We're not going to put a formal recommendation out right right now uh, on on Adobe, but I this fits for HX Trader. I would I would say go out and buy the stock at 565 and I think and maybe we will put a formal recommendation. I got to make up my mind after the video. Um you know, where where I think this stock will be back above 600, which is still 5 to 10% from here. But let's go to options and this is where we're going to finish. And uh you know, what we did do is we came out last week and we went out and made an options recommendation for HX income. So this is what HX income does, okay? We identify these opportunities. Think of them as great companies, great stocks that have gotten hit for some reason we don't think is sustainable. And we think the stock is going up. But most importantly, we don't think the stock is going down much more or at all. And that through time, if you have a, 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 a little bit of a little longer time frame, even if the stock does go down more, you're going to want to own the stock. So what we do is we recommend that investors sell puts. Now, a put is the is the the option but not the obligation to sell a stock at a lower price, okay? Now, that's if you're buying the put. So let's say I had $600 puts here for for uh, Adobe, I might have exercised my puts cuz I could get 600 the stock selling for 565. What we're doing is selling a put. Okay. Now let me just explain exactly what this means. Okay. So we're going to go, we recommended actually at the time, the 535 puts. So, um, I'm going to go here. We're going to pull up 25 puts and I'm on the March puts here. Okay. The 535s right here. So this is the ticker Adobe March 15th, 24 is when the puts, uh, expire. These are the 535 puts. They're t- trading at 1050 per share, uh, 1050 per contract. And a contract is 100 puts. And I, I could go through, we're going to do a separate video, and I did a masterclass before going through what each of these things mean. But let me boil it down, okay? We had a stock, went from 650 to wherever this thing bottomed, 535.40. When you sell the put, you take in that premium. You could have sold these for $20 a contract, okay? That means that you effectively created the stock at $5.15, okay? Well, what does that mean? It means the 535 means you had to buy the stock at 535. So if the stock goes to 525 and you bought it, you had to buy it at 535, remember, you sold this obligation. You have to do it. That sucks, right? I, I'm down $10, right? I, I said I, I, the stock's at 525. I said I'd buy it at 535. But you sold it for 20 bucks. So the simple math is go through, take the stock price, subtract the value of the put option, 
And that's where you're effectively creating the stock. Now, let's go back to the chart here for a second. Let's remember that these uh, that those puts are now selling for $10. We did this with the stock. We literally did it right here, okay? The stock was at like 540. So we were creating the stock at 520. I said, what's the likelihood that the stock goes to 520? Pretty low, given, given all the things we said that it's set up for a bounce, et cetera. Furthermore, though, and this is the key to HX income, I was willing to say that if it went to 520, given the history of the stock, you would be okay owning the stock. And, and this is the final piece to remember that with all of these bets, it's probability. Uh, and I don't know how many of you uh, have studied blackjack, but when you're, when you're playing blackjack, I don't care what hand you have, you can lose. Right. I guess if you get blackjack, you can't lose. But, you know, if, if you've got, you know, uh, 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 an 11, you know, yeah, you've got a high probability of winning on the next card, but you still can lose. What we're looking for are high probability bets and then a bunch of them. And we do 70, 80, 90 percent in HX income in, in our income strategies. We have 95 percent hit rates. So what we were doing here, we identified the opportunity. Instead of buying the stock, we sold the put option. And we basically created the stock at 520. But here's all you needed to do, Randy. Okay, this is all you needed to do. If you don't do anything, you sold this put option. I don't know if you got it off at 20. If you don't do anything, you get to keep all that money. It goes to zero, okay? And you literally would have cashed in the whole thing. So what you really had to ask yourself, this goes to the question that you that you had. So you sold it, you made a quick 35% on your money, right? You sold it yeah. for 2,000 and, and the value went to 1,500 or 1,400. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I just made 600 bucks is basically the equation. And again, another video, we'll go through some of this. If you would have just hung on, you would have made the full 2,000. Now, does that entail more risk? Yes. But remember, as long as the stock is above 535 on March 15th, which is now uh, 19 days away, uh, you make all $2,000. So that's the beauty of HX income. We're taking these opportunities and we're creating these income opportunities that are, are super high probability because of our research, but also that even if they go wrong, you end up owning a great company at a great price. Um, does that make sense? I know we went through a lot of yeah, options crap in there, it, but it, fire away. <laughs> it does. But my, my questions kind of come down to selling and the risk. So on the selling side, like at the end or buying, I guess, technically would be the term at the end. If I what did I have to do on or buy March 15th? If I did nothing, would it expire and then I just own the shares? So, it, it depends. OK, if the stock was 535 or above the options were worthless. Okay. Okay. And they go away. Yeah. Okay. You, you do nothing. You literally just sit there. But these are cashless options. So what would happen is, so in an option, there's something called the intrinsic value. You have the, the, the strike price, 535, and then you've got the, the price of the stock. With a put at 535, if we're at 540, the value of the put option is negative $5. Yeah, there's there's no there's no op, no value no it's not yeah. going to be exercise you just keep the money, but if the stock were at five thirty, that would be exercised and you would have had to come up with the money to buy those shares. So in this case, that would have been a hundred shares at five thirty, which is not an insubstantial amount. But this is why your brokerage account won't let you do this without having uh, the, the, the cash in. And then what would have happened is you would have owned the stock. Now, at that point, you do have a small loss, right? At, at that point, remember, you took in $20, but you lost five. And remember, we went 535 yeah. to 530. So you made 15. The only way you lose money is if the stock is all the way below, uh, in, in this example, 520, the 540 price minus the 20, and then you own the stock. You actually haven't necessarily lost money, though, because now you just own the stock at this very, at this very attractive price, okay? But you would have to come up with the money to buy that stock at, that, uh, at the end there. Got it. That, that makes sense. And, you know, to be honest, what, what got me out of the stock is not fully understanding it, or the option, I should say, and in my Robinhood account saying you're at risk of losing $53,000 or whatever the number was. And okay. assuming everything you said is correct, but not knowing yes. for sure and jumping on a cruise yes. ship for five days and so having limited reason, internet access, I had to get out of the great, position. This is great. 
<laughs> the reason why Robin Hood said that is you would have owned 100 shares with, which are worth $53,000. You would only lose that $53,000 if the stock went to zero. If Adobe went to fucking zero. Okay. So again, you know, this is the funny thing about selling puts. If we're selling puts on meme stocks, holy cow, man, like that's risky. You can, you can get absolutely destroyed. We're selling st- puts on Adobe in a very, very curated uh, specific situation. So that's what that means. So again, you know, you have to have a certain amount of capital. You have to have a discipline, you know, and, and, and again, we do all this for you in terms of like giving you the idea, but that is what happened there. So next time what you should do again, you have to make a determination. Adobe's not going anywhere. You know, just hold on. If you would have held on another 15 days, 20 days, you would have made two grand and you know, you could have paid for, uh, you know, uh, a, a spray tan on the cruise yeah. ship. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate you giving me some of this insight. I hate to walk out on you guys, but I literally have to walk a band on a ship in a second. Yep. Yep, let's go. No, Randy, we appreciate your time. Again, uh, everyone, HX Research, HX Trader, HX Income. We hope this video was helpful to understand our methodology and uh, go check out Adobe. Thank you.